If you Google Josh Strife Hayes Warframe, you'll find a Warframe forum post from May 2021, where the original poster says they've been watching my stuff and really hope Warframe doesn't end up on the worst MMO ever list. Another poster then says, there it is, you jinxed it. If there's one thing YouTubers are good at, it's jumping to conclusions. Now, I resent that. We are also good at stretching five minutes worth of content into a 30 minute video, but let's stay focused on Warframe for the time being. Warframe is an MMO. Or is it? Maybe? Yes. Sort of. Not really. Kind of. It's got some massive maps and some massive player grouping and it is multiplayer and it is online and it definitely has RPG elements, but it's not an MMO. Maybe. So it turns out the Warframe user Megalova did indeed jinx it, and after the Discord channel screaming at me for months to play Warframe, I downloaded it and I played it, and I'd like to share my experience with you now. But to briefly sum it all up, Warframe is a complete mess of game design and feature creep with some of the best gameplay I've ever played. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the vid or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell for all the future videos. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. More on this at the end. For now, let's begin. Warframe. Right, first off, I know that this series is called Worst MMO Ever, but that's just a catchy series title. I've played loads of games on this series, and they're not all bad. Warframe is a strange one, though. It's often described as an MMO light, or a multiplayer corridor looter shooter with some very limited open world elements. And the website proudly states they have over 50 million registered losers, users, and I'm sure that's true. But you won't be journeying around bustling cities or exploring perpetual worlds with random people constantly. Most of your time will be spent inside instance levels and events, so it's kind of an MMO, but not in the traditional sense. Right, let's start at the beginning. Download Warframe from Steam got to playing, and the moment the launcher pops up, the background music hits, and my very first thought, without even knowing who made this, is damn, this reminds me of Unreal Tournament. It's got the deep, thumping, aggressive techno feel to it, so I looked at the makers and Right, this game is made by Digital Extremes, who did indeed make the first Unreal Tournament. One of my favourite games. Okay, now my expectations are sky high. God, I hope this is good. The opening cinematic plays and... Right, I've promised to always be honest in these videos. For better or for worse, I will always give my genuine opinion. I have trashed games that I subjectively love, and I have praised games that I subjectively hate. So please understand what I mean when I say Warframe's intro cinematic is an absolute masterpiece. It is stunningly, jaw-droppingly good. I keep extensive notes when I play these games so I can write the script afterwards. You want to know how much I love this intro? I didn't even write anything down. I was too busy watching it. So basically there's some evil alien dudes invading and this troubled person prays to these statues of ancient warriors called Tenno. There are three of them and the intro movie makes sure to feature each one and lets us see their fighting style. This is a brilliant merging of style and substance. Fantastic storytelling. It's not only storytelling but mechanically advising what to expect from gameplay. You've got a melee focused ninja dude with a sword and some knives leaping over walls and making me wish the Tenchu series was still going. This energy manipulation later, focusing more on crowd control and battlefield manipulation, and then the electrical debuffer, but all of them appear to be damage dealers. No tanks or healers here, just many, many ways to kill things. And now we get to choose which of these Tenno we want to be, or are these Warframes, or are Warframes things Tenno wear, or control? You know what, it doesn't matter, we'll fill in the plot later. Let's go with Excalibur, the close-up sword ninja dude. We hear a woman's voice, this is Lotus, or Space Mummy. She gives us a surge of power, we're alive, and now gameplay starts. WASD movement, the camera is locked a certain distance away from you, so no zooming in or out. It's an action combat system, and our first power is press 1 to slash, and my god does it slash well. With everything suitably slashed, we follow the opening tutorial and journey outside into the rain, and holy crap, this game looks gorgeous. Now, Unreal Tournament 1, 2, 2004, and 3 are some of my all-time favourite games, and one thing they did incredibly well was atmosphere. Using level layout, 
lighting, ambience, noise and debris. They created environments that were a joy to explore and this is exactly the same. There is background music but it's very subtle and only used to enhance the loneliness and mystique of the opening section. You mostly just hear the rainfall. The lighting and reflections are stunning. This is a gorgeous opening segment. Choose between a sword and a stick. Well, if Shadowversity has taught me anything, it's that nunchucks suck and sticks are awesome. So let's go with some big stick energy. Press E to smack things, and good god, smacking things is satisfying. And that is something we'll come back to again later. Follow the instructions down a path, double jump over a gap, then crouch under a tree, and this is a great hidden tutorial. This is not just an obstacle course, it's a journey with a start and a reason. We are fighting off aliens. It's a hidden tutorial done right. Next choice, pistol versus knife. Well, I'm going for a full-on stealth build, so pistol, obviously. If everyone's dead, there's no one around to say you weren't stealthy. The gunplay itself is stellar. Aim down the sights, reloading, all the usual bells and whistles are there, nothing wrong here, and the gun's sound effects are good. Next up, one of the techniques you'll be using the most, the bullet jump. Crouch, then instantly jump to launch yourself through the air like an angry salmon jumping up a raging river. Bullet jumping makes travelling feel fun. It's fast, it's responsive, there's no cooldown. It's an excellent movement system. This, again, is something we'll come back to again later. Our escape ship arrives, but then gets shot down by the intro segment's big bad guy, Vox. He is the same guy who put a strange bug on our arm earlier. This is a great bit of storytelling. The big bad guy just destroyed our means of escape, thus making us hate him and forcing us to keep fighting. It also sets up a villain which, from a story archetype standpoint, is a great driving force. We now have motivation. Next choice, bow or machine gun. Bow, obviously, I've played Tomb Raider, I know how massively overpowered medieval weapons are in games, and god damn I was not wrong. Oh, also, if you bullet jump into the air then draw the bow, you aim and slowly glide while aiming. If you do this with a pistol, you full on John Woo your way through the air, diving and shooting. I can't fully explain how goddamn cool you feel while doing this, and that is probably the biggest thing that we will come back to later. Sometimes you'll find locked doors and hacking into them brings up a quick minigame, either stopping the spinning dial at the right time by pressing spacebar, or in later levels lining up some puzzle tiles. It's easy to understand, doesn't interrupt the action too badly, and because you are timed it keeps the pressure up. Plus, if you fail, you don't die, you just have to fight some more enemies, which honestly, with this combat system, doesn't feel like a punishment. We finish off the opening section with a huge mob fight which just hits all the right buttons. It's that beautiful balance of tactical and chaotic, brutal and graceful. It's planning, acting and reacting combined and the fluid movement system combined with the stellar ranged combat makes this just so goddamn fun. And then we win, and are whisked off to our ship, and now the problems with the game begin. Your ship is your hub of operations. It's where you'll upgrade your mods and your Warframe and select your next mission from. It's a nice little setup, but the first time you arrive, you are instantly greeted with a message pop-up giving you free stuff. Now these are probably event items, but this is a really jarring change. From a very nice, self-contained story with great pacing to, hey, free stuff! You don't even know what this is, but have it, it's free! doesn't really work. But let's overlook this small oversight and focus on the gameplay. While on your ship you have access to a navigation console which shows you all the levels you can travel to. Each level is a repeatable self-contained run and gun adventure. Some need you to kill stuff, some are area wave defence, some you need to rescue NPCs. There's lots, but they're all essentially some variation of go and do space ninja stuff. Which I'm fine with. Space ninja stuff is awesome. Although I don't think my bow is meant to be doing that. That doesn't look right. Here's what I've written down in my notes for this bit. Great combat, great movement. That's it. That's all I wrote. Because I was actually enjoying the game so much, I forgot to write things down. Warframe is one of the only games that was so much fun on a moment-to-moment, -moment, second to second gameplay basis, I forgot to do my job. This mission sees us retrieve an important component and then we head back to the ship and install it and get access to more systems, the marketplace. Okay, I absolutely love this whole opening. Not only has the opening used a hidden, narrative-driven tutorial to show us the basics and then put us in a position to use them, it's then had us slowly expand the ship and unlock additional systems one at a time, so we get chance to understand the system and explore it and see how it relates to us before introducing more. This is brilliant. The early game missions are explained to us and each of them are about unlocking more of the ship. I hope the game keeps doing this. Spoiler alert, it does not. 
My next mission is apparently a multiplayer one, because I'm joined in-game by aim finds. I didn't form a party, the game just kind of put us together. And it was fine, and he did indeed aim fine. We ran forward together, shot some stuff, and then lagged out and disconnected. You know, all the usual stuff you do with an online stranger. The level design is terrific. The width and depth used to funnel enemies then allow explosive jumps, the multi-floor builds and the parkour lines between them. This is just fantastic use of the 3D gaming space. The colour palette is also terrific, from the shiny chrome pipes to the dull industrial rusting. The lashings of red piercing laser sights or the brilliant blinding white of the outside blizzards and everything in between. The environmental design is a visual feast. We finish the mission and unlock the next feature, mods. This will become an extremely important mode in the future. Basically, you can upgrade bits and equip stuff to yourself. More shields, more health, more firepower, and you can build your Warframe the way you want it. Long-time players will tell me this gets extremely complex and somewhat expensive, and I completely believe them. Free games are usually the most expensive in the long term. My issue with the mod system is, while the tutorial briefly touches on it, it doesn't explain it. That's kind of left up to us later, and this is the first example of the tutorial making a mistake. An essential in-depth system is just kind of ignored. So we've got this little thing on our arm called an Ascaris and we need to get it off or we'll keep having visions of this evil dude. So we need to build a foundry on our ship. That means we set off to find the foundry blueprints on a nearby planet. In the early game, it's pretty hard to be killed because of your recharging shield. So you've got quite a bit of leeway to try riskier, cooler looking maneuvers. It's fine to be pretty tough at the start of the game for the training section. As long as this difficulty ramps up to test me soon, within the next hour or two, I will be happy. Spoilers! It does! Oh god, it does ramp up. It ramps up so hard. Get the blueprint, fix the foundry, now we need to build this Ascaris remover and that needs resources, so back to the planet to gather some stuff. And can I just point out how smoothly the mission intro cinematic transitions into actual gameplay? And how the cinematic seems to be rendered in the game's engine. If you made the gameplay for Warframe, you are an actual wizard. So we need resources to build things to get rid of the other thing. Thankfully resources can be collected by hitting things or shooting things, which is convenient because hitting things and shooting things are the two things we're really, really good at. It's at this point I'm wondering about the greater narrative and plot, but let me just walk you through what happens. The game sounds and looks incredible, and it plays exactly how a game described as Space Ninjas should play. It's making my brain do all the happy chemicals. And then another part of my brain says, hey, what's the plot again? And the excited part shouts, shut up nerds, Space Ninjas! The plot in Warframe serves the same purpose as the plot in Unreal Tournament. Technically it's there, technically no one cares. So we build the anti ascaris device and get it off us, but there's a failsafe and we're going to blow up and die unless we hunt down the evil Vor and kill him so hard the Ascaris failsafe bomb doesn't explode. Look, at this point we are operating on Power Rangers logic and I'm totally okay with it. I'm also loving having a sarcastic AI companion. Have a quick listen. Hello, Operator. May I suggest you access navigation and save your life? For my sake. I was on board when you said Space Ninjas. Sarcastic Space Ninjas. That's just the cherry on top. Not relevant to the gameplay in any way. Just want to point out that giant sci-fi space cannons are just really frickin' cool. In fact, this whole ship is cool. The bullet jump makes travel really fast and responsive. I can zip around at insane speeds, but I don't want to. I want to explore the ship. It looks awesome. The mission ends and, oh, here's another design I absolutely love. We have found the coordinates for Vor and we can leave to go and hunt him down. But there is a passenger ship on a collision course with this one. So we could choose to fight through more enemies to save that ship. But if we do so, our shield will be heavily reduced for the remainder of the mission. So leave now and fulfill our original mission or do an optional objective with a handicap. What a great choice to give the player. Leave or put your ninja skills to the test. Obviously we're saving the other ship. Follow the coordinates we've got in Phase 4. Now if someone said to me, Stealth Ninja Space Game, this gameplay is literally exactly what I'd want. This is perfect. They have promised and they have delivered. Even the fight with Vor is top notch. He teleports around, summons mobs, throws actual damaging attacks at you, there's cover, there's chaos, there's a whole dollop of ninja goodness. This was a really fun fight. 
With Vor dead, and us essentially being a safe and free Warframe, we now get told there's more injustice in the galaxy and we should use the navigation panel to go and hunt it down and kill it. You know, the usual tutorial over go and be a hero thing. And this is the exact moment the game, as a whole, goes downhill. I have no idea what to do. I know I've got a navigation console, and the market, and the foundry, and some mods, and the armory, but this is the moment the adventure line is dropped. Now there is a plot, but the game isn't interested in helping you find it or showing you what it is. There is an actual recommended through line, but it's up to you to test everything until you pick it up again. And while I was Twitch streaming this, people in the chat kept saying this is the type of game you need a second monitor open so you can always have the wiki available at all times. And I completely see where they're coming from. Warframe is one of those games that expects you to already know what to do or to be friends with someone who already knows what to do. I use the navigation console to jump into another mission and it it's over really fast. There are other people now because it's an open public mission and while speed is great for a solo run, it can become one of those oh everything is already dead type of experiences when you've got other people charging ahead of you who are higher levels than you are. So it seems the early game, the main objectives are the junctions, pathways between planets. I should unlock those. I do need to hit certain criteria to do this. This junction needs me to have four mods installed, so I pop over to the mod station and I only seem to be able to install two. And I'm not sure why, so I just fiddle around with it for a bit. And this is the moment I was talking about earlier. Warframe has a load of systems, and it tells you it has them, but it does not make sure you understand them. The best way I can explain this is, have you ever started a new job and on the first day someone points out everything to you but all they do is literally point to things and say what they are and then they walk off and leave you to it? And you're there thinking, great, I know what stuff is called but I don't actually know what any of these systems do. That's Warframe. Turns out mods have a point cost and putting them into a specific slot reduces the cost and I only have a certain point cap. This probably should have been briefly mentioned in the mods section of your tutorial. I managed to fit four on eventually, so off to the junction. This is a one-on-one -on -one fight with a tougher opponent. Simple premise, but still fun execution because it focuses on what the game is good at, being a really good space ninja game. I've also unlocked a mastery rank 1 test accessed from the menu. Oh, side note, the menu being a hologram displayed from your wrist and having the character model's head follow your cursor as you're looking at it is brilliant. It's very dead space, using in-game assets as technical game design assets. I love it. The mastery test is a VR style training zone which involves taking down a load of enemies using certain weapons and skills. It's fun. It focuses on the game's strengths, gameplay and combat. Plot be damned, this is just gameplay. Back on the ship and I really have no idea what to do. I explore the map and travel over to Cetus because there's nothing saying I shouldn't but also nothing saying I should. The cutscene is pretty cool. Apart from this guy with a dick hanging from his chin. Why? Why did you model this? Was this a joke? Did someone dare you to put this in? I was fully immersed in sci-fi space ninja fantasy until old swinging dick chin turned up. So here's the MMO part. Well, kind of. This is what seems to be a main hub city with side missions you can accept from vendors. I don't know what part these missions play in a greater narrative because the game seems to have forgotten it has a narrative. Also, talking to this dude starts a quest. That sends me out into this massive open world expanse hunting down enemies I think are way out of my league. Now I love the open area. I love the movement. I love the combat. In fact, I love everything about the gameplay. But I'm starting to feel very confused by the game design. I'm fighting alongside some other people for a while and we do well, I think? And then we head back to the city and I return to the merchant and hand the quest in, I think. Again, I'm not actually sure what I just did. And then he tells me about his friends and we get this picture. What the hell is this? This looks like something out of Legend of Zelda Faces of Evil CDI animation. Who drew this? After being terrified by that picture, I just go back to the ship. Right, now I'm thinking Warframe has stunningly good gameplay and an excellent narrative-driven tutorial and opening section. But when the game actually begins, it loses all direction. There are so many systems suddenly thrust onto the player, like mods and the foundry and recoloring and the armory and railjacking and the fields of Eidolon and team-based PvP, which I queued up for, but it never popped. It is such a jarring switch. 
from tightly scripted and motivated gameplay to open world directionless do whatever you want, and it's going to leave new players feeling very overwhelmed. If you Google Warframe, most of the results are about things you wish you knew when starting, or player guides, or walkthroughs. It seems there is a theme that this game is obtusely difficult to actually grasp early on. Well, I've unlocked Venus, so let's go and do some missions and we can talk about the game's issues. First off, Venus is where the difficulty ramps up, and I love this. Enemies are now dangerous, my shields need to recharge, and I can't just button mash. This is brilliant gameplay design, and it makes me even more annoyed at the general system failures. Warframe can, from my opinion, be broadly broken down into two main experiences you have when playing it. The actual in-game mission gameplay, the running and jumping and shooting, and the out-of-mission gameplay game systems like modding and upgrading and building and unlocking stuff. The actual in-game gameplay is terrific. It's top-notch. It's one of the best movement systems in an online game. The gunplay is awesome. You feel like a space ninja. The screen blur on dashing, the little sparks when melee attacking, the satisfying loud thud when you headshot someone with an arrow. Warframe has paid attention to the minutia and it shows. Warframe gives you that unadulterated feeling of being awesome when you do something awesome and it's literally built to let you do awesome things all the time. It's mechanically brilliant when you're playing it. If there is one thing Warframe does better than almost any other game, it's make you feel cool. But all the stuff outside of the gameplay, the actual game design systems, they are so needlessly obtuse and terribly explained. I feel like I need a veteran player to sit down with me and dedicate a good week just to bringing me up to speed on what I had thrust upon me. This feels like feature creep, like every new year a new system has been added and players at the time have had all the time they needed to learn and adapt. But new players, like me, get greeted with years of changes and advancements and it's just... it's overwhelming. The problem is they've shown they can design a well-paced game with the opening. That was perfect. Hidden tutorial, gameplay, cinematics, combining, unlocking features and systems step by step with relevance to a narrative and a defined bad guy. That was such a strong start. And then it totally drops the ball when you are given complete intimidating freedom and no sense of direction in this otherwise brilliant game. Eventually, after exploring the ship, I discover the Codex, which appears to be a load of quest lines. This one needs me to unlock another junction. So I check that junction on the navigation control, and that needs me to do some more stuff to unlock it, so I work backwards from there, finding the level names and unlocking them in order. And this eventually brings me to the first boss, the Jackal. Now, I killed the Jackal for the first time live on stream a few days ago, and I died a lot. Let me just use this as a perfect example of this game's strengths and weaknesses. The Jackal fight is fantastic. It's a spectacle of lights and explosions and mechanics all mixing. Dodging boss mechanics, area denial mechanics, four solo revives allowed per fight to make up for the usual party size of four. The music, the experience, everything about the Jackal fight is amazing. This is the ramping up in difficulty we needed. This is a no-holds-barred battle where the game will push you and punish you for not knowing how to play it. You need to understand bullet jumping, cover, wall jumping to win. It's got mechanics, it's got phases, it's got a banging soundtrack. This is good gameplay. And yet, the game systems I had to slog through to get here were so convoluted and not bothered at all about helping me get here they could easily kill a casual player's desire to keep playing. The onboarding process to the rest of your game, once your excellent tutorial finishes, is dire. Warframe has incredible gameplay and awful game systems. It is both insanely fun and awkwardly convoluted. It is simple yet satisfying in-game and complex yet irritating out of game. I don't want to change a single thing about this gameplay, because this is the bar by which spectacle action space ninja fighters are to be judged. But I would have a serious look at the narrative structure and the new player experience in relation to your vast arsenal of in-game systems, because you need a better onboarding process. You have such a good game here, with one of the best opening sections in any MMO that is held back 
by an annoying system heavy early game experience. Warframe is like being invited to a party and when you turn up you don't know anyone, everyone's speaking a different language and you don't get the group dynamics, but the music is great, the vibe is cool and everyone seems to be having a good time. Warframe is like watching a martial arts film already halfway through and the movies in Mandarin. You understand enough to kind of follow what's going on and the action scenes are really awesome, but when someone asks you, so what's happening? You'd look at them, you'd be like, I have no idea. While I was playing Warframe, I was chatting to fellow YouTuber Chef PK. I asked him what he thought of Warframe and he replied, Warframe is too shiny for me. It's like watching lubed up alien bodybuilders killing things. And I mean, he's not wrong. I had so much fun playing this game. I added it to my Steam favourites. I Twitch streamed it. I stopped taking notes when I was meant to be critiquing and I just played. That is the biggest sign that I personally love a game. Warframe is what happens when you give the entire budget to the people who made Unreal Tournament and say, make a sci-fi space ninja game. They will give you the best sci-fi space ninja game you ever did see. Then the moment it releases, someone will say, hey, what's the plot? And you're just stood there thinking, Ah, right. The plot. I knew we forgot something. So, Warframe. It's got awful system design, but top-notch gameplay. It's ninjas in space. The gameplay is ninjas in space. The plot is ninjas in space. The adventure line, the tutorial, the hook for new players is ninjas in space. And if you made the onboarding process better, it would be the best ninjas in space game ever made. Final score. It's ninjas in space. Out of ten. Thank you for watching. Another big thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support the Patreon from just £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord. And, as always, have a great day.